Hi, my name is Jeremias Apolinari. I'm here as a representative of the West Indies School of Theology, trying to answer you some very important questions on liberation theology. I have with me the company of Mr. Isaiah St. Rose. Liberation theology is one of the most important topics on theological interpretation through the Word of God, which relates to the poor. Liberation theology is also one of the most important topics to the Church of the 21st century. Since poverty is one of the major problems of the large cities and the small villages. The five most important questions are to be made, and Mr. St. Rose has some good background on his studies on poverty and liberation theology. And the first question we should ask, what is liberation theology? Liberation theology is a Christian perspective that uses the poor or poverty as its starting point. And so it seeks to address what is poverty and, and how should you treat with poverty. So in its basic sense, liberation theology uses poverty as its theological starting point. And so you must understand poverty from the perspective of the poor. The second question, and not less important, is who is the poor? According to, to Snyder, he summarized poverty into three main classes. The first class is that of the marginal existence, that uh, those are millions who lack the bare necessities of life like food, clothing, shelter, etc. The second class he summarizes those who are socially powerless. And these are the people who lack education and understanding of the social environment and how to adequately uh, be a part of it. And the final class he went on to explain was that those who are careless poor, the, the careless poor, which are those who are not, they don't have a vested interest in the status quo. So things like economics and politics and, and, and the likes, they don't have an interest. They are more laid back. They just don't care because they are poor. And again, it reflects the, because they don't understand the social condition in which they are living in. They take a position where they just more or less don't care. But Gustavo, however, the father of liberation theology, summarized the poor, the poor sorry, in two basic or broad categories. Those who are poor, which are, which are those who are lacking and those who are not able to have, again, the basic necessities in life, and those who are spiritually poor. So that is who we classify as poor people. Since we know who is the poor, we should ask the third major question to liberation theology, which is what causes poverty. Anderson and Stransky said this, that social structures are pure and simple and evangelical. So what causes poverty? Those people who are poor, they are not poor on their own, uh, on their own account. No, they are poor because the social structures and the, the socio-economic structures that exist is solely responsible for poverty. These are the structures that oppress the poor people, those who don't have a proper understanding of how to live in, condi in the condition that they are placed in. They are oppressed and they experience a great measure of injustice by socio-economic structures. We're looking at politics, we're looking at uh, governmental policies, and, and, and all these fancy buildings that you and I and some people enjoy in the world they are the real cause of poverty, not the poor. You don't blame the poor. You blame the governmental structures. You blame the politics. That is who are really responsible for the poor. Since we know what's the source of poverty, we should ask the following question. How do we eliminate poverty? When a poor person says that they are 
hurting and that they are oppressed. Our responsibility is to first and foremost believe that he is hurting and that he is oppressed. We must not take it for granted that he's dead in our life. So the question is, how do you eliminate poverty? One bishop of Latin America says he employed a see judge act concept. In other words, in the words of Gustavo, he believes that the best way to eliminate poverty is to take an approach that speaks of praxis. But what is praxis? It is the ongoing reflection so it is an ongoing interplay between reflection and action. Theology must not start from theology in that sense. To eliminate poverty it must not start from theology. It must begin from the standpoint of the poor. You must reflect on what situation that is happening to the poor. And with that reflection, take a proactive approach in terms of an active approach. To elim eliminate poverty. So we're looking at uh, examples like orphanages. Um, we're looking at examples like finding creative and economic ways to help the poor and equip them to move out from the oppressed situation. We're looking at um, first, well, most importantly, prayer. We cannot eliminate prayer from the final analysis as to how poverty must be eliminated. However, praying alone should not be the only thing that should be employed. We must act. We must act uh, passionately. We must act understandingly from the perspective of the poor. And praxis is how we can eliminate the poor. Fighting economic structures, opposing governmental policies that oppress the poor, striking on whatever innovative ways that we need to find to make our voice known that poverty is wrong and must be eliminated, you do that. The number five major question on liberation theology, it relates to what's the action of the poor? What can a poor person do? What's the better option? I should put this way, what's the preferential option to the poor person? According to Strom, the phrase that have become the most influential in theological studies over the last century is the phrase, the preferential option for the poor. What is the preferential option for the poor? Well, according to Augustine, he says this, it is good to feed those who are hungry. It is good to give water to those who are thirsty, but it is better that we neither have those who are hungry nor thirsty. In other words, the preferential option for the poor is where you can identify with the poor and commit yourself to help eliminate poverty. Now, committing yourself to the poor or the preferential option for the poor is not just a one-time event where you give charity and so on, but it's a, lo a lifelong commitment where you make it your sole duty to always helping the poor, always fighting economic structures and again remember that we said that poverty is because of uh, economic structures now the preferential option for the poor is for persons and not for poverty so it's not for those who are in it's not for poverty in the sense of the condition but rather those who live in the condition poverty may i remind you that poverty in the past was believed as something uh, where persons were destined to be. Some believe that persons were born poor, that it is a destiny. But poverty is not a destiny. Poverty is not something that you're born into. Poverty is a situation that is created by mankind. And therefore, to eliminate poverty, I go back to the whole, to eliminate poverty, or rather the persons that is solely responsible to eliminate poverty is man themselves because poverty is a created condition it is not something that you're born into it is not a destination it is not uh, something that is embedded upon you and you have no choice it is something that is caused by economic structures 
and because it is caused by man, then man has within himself the power to eliminate poverty by himself. So the preferential option is committing yourself to the poor, feeding, but more than just feeding. It is fighting poverty. As long as there is breath within you, you need to fight poverty and be committed to the poor. Thank you for those enlightening answers for our questions. I hope you enjoyed the five major answers to the five major questions on liberation theology. Now, some very important final considerations from Mr. Isaiah. So, what is the seriousness of poverty? Um, Gustavo employed a very interesting concept. He says, creation is life. In the ultimate analysis, poverty is less, those who have less. But the seriousness of it is understood in light of the final analysis, which is death. So poverty is so serious that should person continue in the uh, poverty-stricken state, it is considered to be death, and in some cases some can die, which is against life. It is against creation. It is against the giving of life. Poverty affects millions of people over the world. Age doesn't deter poverty. Structure, looks, education doesn't ward off poverty. Everybody is affected by poverty, or rather every country, every nation is affected by poverty to some extent. It's a serious issue that the church must... Uh, address and seek to understand properly and properly address it and um, make it our effort to eliminate it. We're looking at those who are oppressed, injustice, those who are marginalized, 